the Masonic Shrine Fraternity to say that I was would ever wind up being a potentate at the temple. And to me, it was just when I mean, it was just such a big picture, you know. And of course, people ask me every day, says I just don't see how you do it. Uh, you've got to uh, put a plan together. You've got to have surround yourself with good people. No, I, I never dreamed that I'd be where I am today. I was born um, in Memphis, Tennessee. We lived in um, the outskirts of Memphis. When I turned 13, uh, of course, my dad was, was a shrine. You know, got me into Demolay. We had a good time in Demolay. It was uh, good for me. Uh, kept me out of trouble, kept me from doing things that I probably, you know, could have been exposed to. I wanted to be a Mason. I became a Shriner in December of 1977. We were very involved um, in, in the area in, in Olive Branch. We had just moved to Memphis, my family, and I had double dated with a friend of mine, and she wanted to introduce me to some of the new schoolmates that went to another school. And we walked over to their car, and somebody knocked me down in the parking lot getting out of the car, and it was Chris. And I couldn't stand him. He was the most obnoxious human in the world. Anyway, we somehow just got together after that. We've been together since we were 15. And Chris and I have two children and four grandchildren. Family, you know, means everything. We've always had our home as a gathering point. We uh, enjoyed coming up here on a Friday afternoon and coming back in on a Sunday. We'd spend the weekend. We go out and, and put the pontoon boat in and go out on the river and uh, we'll spend the day out on the river and uh, try to come back in around three, four o'clock in the afternoon. We'll cook, you know, kind of what we prepared or planned. You know, hopefully by 7.30, 8 o'clock, we've got everybody, you know, has, has eaten. But uh, we, we will fry fish, uh, we'll cook hamburgers, we'll cook steaks, uh, just an outdoor type uh, cooking area. The kids uh, will come when they can, and we, uh, you know, have friends come as well. Chris is just, he pours his heart into whatever he wants to do and I knew early on when he went through the shrine at a young age that that was going to be a major part of our life and it has been. Our children have grown up through the shrine and have a, a second family which is the shrine family just like we do. I guess it's 2005 daddy just finished his potentate of Wahhabi. He said, I'm gonna run for the Imperial Line. And I'm like, God, are you crazy? What are you thinking? My daddy wanted to do it. I thought it was, I, I knew we could do it. I just didn't know how some country boys from Mississippi was gonna, gonna do that. Being as we're talking about growing up as a, as a shrine kid, um, getting to see what they got to do, you know, how they help people. And, you know, the, I remember the first kid that uh, my granddaddy took to the hospital. You know, if I, if I could touch somebody's life, like my dad or my granddad has, I've done, I've done something. I'm very proud, uh, very proud of my, my dad, my granddad, um, my uncle, my stepfather-in-law is a Shriner. They've, they've all got the same characters. They've got the same characteristics to be a great Mason, to be a great Shriner. As a kid growing up with parents who are Shriners, um, there was a lot of people in the community that were Shriners, so we had a lot of friends we were always doing things with. We've always incorporated everyone else in our family. It's never been just my mom, my dad, me, and Alan. My parents have always extended out their services and their love for everyone. I'm extremely proud of my parents. My mom is my best friend. And my dad, of course, has great advice on everything. So he's always ends up being the go-to. What do you think about this? They have such great hearts and wisdom. And I think that they'll absolutely do well in this position. 
they'll do anything for anybody whether that person has helped them before or not you could be a complete stranger and you walk up to them and if you need something they'll do everything in their power to help you he has to be dedicated to what he is doing so it just shows that he really cares about all the children that need help pretty cool having a grandfather that's in such a high position right now You know, I'll get there at 6.30 in the morning. I might leave it at, you know, 7.30, and, or I might leave at 8.30. You know, I, I, don't, uh, I don't know when I'm going to leave there, but, you know, it depends on what we need to discuss. A lot of contractors meet there. We might leave there and, and go look at a project or something. My dad was working, doing the refrigeration business, worked you know, with him on the weekends, and of course I would go on calls and whatnot with him uh, after school at a young age, and uh, he, of course he had me hands-on right in the middle of the business. Picked up on it very quickly, and then from there uh, went to work for him, and, and uh, you know, the rest of it's where I am today. You build a lot of relationships through employees. You build a lot of relationships through through customers and, and clients, and you get a lot of opportunities to do different things. Even you know people that you meet. You know it, it opens so many different doors to, to so many different things, and to have a, a good relationship with the customer, a good relationship with your employees. You know it it goes a long ways, and it's a, it's a family business. That's a little bit of comfort, I guess, in a sense, to to some homeowners and stuff. You know that you still got some some of those roots that your forefathers or your, your parents or somebody had started before. A very important and intelligent leader. Uh, he cares about people. He cares about uh, your well-being. Whenever you see him, you'll see him smile and he'll shake your hand. He's just a, a people person. I believe he does that in his own business as well as uh, in the shrine. He's got the shrine at heart and Ethel Boat. He was elected uh, potentate of Wahhabi Shrine Center in Jackson, Mississippi in uh, third and potentate in 2004. And he and Ethel are uh, served our temple well as potentate, which I'm sure he'll do the same as uh, Shriners International. Ethel is a very caring person. She is very dedicated in what she does. In her heart, she's much as a Shriner as any noble that we have. And she believes in what we do for the kids. She's a person that uh, is a giver, not a taker. Uh, you know, Dad, he, he couldn't wait not to be able to go to the convention. You can see pictures of Dad and I together. Uh, very much alike. Which there, there's not a person that I don't come in contact with. Uh, tells me how lucky I am to have had him as a dad. But dad would be excited to be there. We were in business together, we rode competition together. I mean, we, we were like buds. We would work hard to uh, get our work caught up on Thursday to where we could put the motorcycles on the trailer and jump in the car and, and go ride competition. And that was our family too. So our children went with us to all the competitions, the conventions, the association, I mean everything. It's just, it truly has been a great experience for our family. And we've just had a great life together. If it wasn't being involved in a shrine unit, I can assure you I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. The unit, the fun that you have, the fellowship that you have, if you enjoy what you're doing, you're going to continue to do it. And the things that you need to do don't become work, they become fun. So this is a different extension of it and kept us involved for a long time. And um, there's many kids that we've had the opportunity to help. And you don't forget that. Don't lose sight of your mission.